Hi, my name's Tristan, and these are the Kawaguchi Lectures. On Sunday the 14th, 2019, I was lucky enough to be present at a series of lectures that Mr Kawaguchi gave at the Australian leg of the Gundam Builders World Cup. These lectures were unique from the point of view that they've only ever been delivered once in public, and this was in Osaka, Japan, I believe it was earlier this year. They have never been delivered, heard, or viewed in the English-speaking world. With the help of Lincoln Wright, who is the brains and face behind Paint and Plastic and is also a 25-year veteran of the Japanese modelling industry, we are now very lucky to be able to have these lectures, as I said, have never been heard of outside of Japan and they've only occurred once before. Uh, thanks to Lincoln, we're actually able to get a translation into modelers' language um, and now just gain some insight into the way Mr. Kawaguchi does stuff. We were privileged enough to be able to hear him speak quite passionately about one of his favorite topics, which is using the Gundam story to influence your Gunpla building, alongside getting an insider's point of view of the judging process at the, the finals of the Gundam Builders World Cup. These lectures are unique from the point of view that at these conventions, he usually just delivers workshop style demonstrations, which is him showing people how to paint or how to scribe, etc, etc, etc. We don't actually get to hear him talk through a process and show and share the love that he has for this this property that he's been involved with since day one. It's now celebrating 40 years. So, you know, he, he is, as we all know, the face of Gundam, but I don't think a lot of people understand his actual role and involvement in the property. So to be able to actually listen to him talk about this stuff as opposed to showing us how to do things was a very unique experience. Given that these two talks went for well over an hour, I've split them up into their natural breaking points uh, just to allow for easier access for viewing. Because if you're like me, trying to sit down and digest something that's like 60 plus minutes is actually quite difficult. So I've split them up into four to five parts each uh, at natural break points in the, in the talks, focusing on a specific topic uh, that was in that section of the talk. I do apologize in advance. The noise, sound quality, I've, I've done the best that I can. I am not a sound engineer. I've isolated and boosted the volume and the audio as much as I can. But unfortunately, there is a bit of noise in the background because it is filmed at a convention. Uh, in one of the talks, there's like a trumpet playing some anime theme for a couple of minutes, which does get a little bit annoying, but you can still hear the audio quite well. So I do apologize in advance. Remember, I'm not a professional film sound person. I'm just a guy with a camera who's sitting in the front row. Please enjoy these videos. Um, I'm really hoping that they're of help to you. And it was my pleasure to be able to record them and edit them. Again, I do apologize for the sound quality. I've done the best that I can. I'm not a professional, so please enjoy. So even in Japan this year, they're also opening up a side mission, it's going to be an SD course. And it's because we understand the, uh, the challenge with entering a competition that's designed to produce a winner to send overseas as a qualifier. The pressure is high, isn't it? So we want to be more inclusive. Here. ただね、あの、ま、その、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
でえー、とよく、ね、言われるのがその3つの項目で果たして正確に、えー、審査できるのかとよく言われるんですどうやって説明するの So,、uh, but of course, Kawaguchi san is constantly asked which of them is more important or how should I focus on this? であの昔ね、やっぱりコンテストで、えー、とチェックリストを作ったことがあるんですよ。So、in the past, of course, he's tried working from a checklist. で、えー、いろんなあのスキルレベルやなんかっていうのをチェックリストにして、勉強にしたら、すごく長いことになってますよね。<笑> so, and by categorizing all of the small details and then putting it to a skill level, the checklist became incredibly long. でそれを実際に使ってもらったことがあるんですけども、そうすると、集まった作品に例外ばっかりになるんですよ。やっ,てや,っやったことないところがあると、そう、でも、one of the challenges with that, of course, was because the list was so long, not every model was doing each of those items that are on the checklist, and it looks terrible next to somebody's work if there's a bunch of red lines, like they're not doing something. なので、えー、とそうやっていくと間違いさらしのようになってしまうのでそれは多分、えー、作品を評価する基準にはやっぱちょっとならないんじゃないかっていうふうに。Kawaguchi san was, was, was concerned that it wouldn't feel like a positive, empowering event. Seeing all of these red lines, it's as if you're making mistakes with your work, and that's not the case. One of the challenges Kawaguchi san has, of course, is that he needs a system that can compare because some people might be very good on paint but poor on concept. Somebody might be really good on build but poor on paint, for example. And so, the key is the social-technical aspect of the work that the judges have to handle. So, the image is the key. Handle is the key. その時にいいものといいものがあった時にみんなスキルレベルを比べてどうなんだろうとか、えー、新しい取り組みがあるんだろうかとか、えー、そういったいいものを最終的に決めていく段階でいろいろな、えー、とーなんていうのかな、えー、ポイントを比較、えー、していくような形で審査しています。So, learning from the experience of judging. Uh, Kawaguchi san learned that sometimes he has to put two very good objects together, two good、uh, finished projects. And、uh, so then he goes through、uh, a process of thinking okay, well, which one has used perhaps newer techniques? Which one has brought something new to the genre? And、uh, choosing between them, of course, is very difficult. <coughs> でもそれでもやっぱり、えー、結果を出していかなきゃならないのがやっぱり難しいところで。So of course choosing between some of these masterpieces is next to impossible, but we have to have a winner. でただその時にねやっぱりあのレギュレーションがあってのコンテストなので、うん、まあレギュレーションから外れてしまうものはもうどんなに良くてもごめんなさい。But of course it's a competition that has regulations. So. If、uh, it doesn't really matter how great something is, if it does go outside of the rules, sadly it's disqualified. Now, I think that the character is a license to get a little bit of 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 a license. デザインとか、うんうん、そういうものをガンプラに入れたものっていうのはちょっと面白いですよね。まずいですよね。So one of the big challenges Bandai, of course, has is that、uh, Bandai is a company that sells someone else's property, Sunrise. So、uh, one of the things that、uh, Kawaguchi-san has, even though we think it's really cool and we like what's been done, it's、uh, and it's a, it's a very Japanese thing. We've got to be careful of.、Uh, Importing characters,、uh, properties we call it IP, from <laughs> from from other other、uh, other IPs and importing them and putting it into Gumpla, it makes it difficult, no matter how good it is, to make it a winner. ね、あとあのいろんな人の作品を
<笑>見て、えーまあ、多分それに刺激をもらうっていうのはとてもあると思うんです、うん、でまあ多分それをそのままちょっと真似しちゃったようなものに関してはやっぱちょっとオリジナリティはそれはないでしょっていうことで NG にしてます So、Kawaguchi san suggesting that, of course, we can take inspiration from these things, but if you are bringing something in, it does have to have its own originality. Sadly, it happens all too often that some of these wonderful projects simply don't fit within the regulation size. It's a cube, as you guys know, 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. Now, I look at the middle of the 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters, the base, and the bottom of the top 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 But then things start sneaking out of the side. One of the really tricky ones that comes in is when the diagonals come into it because we saw last year, right? Yes, it's 50 by 50, but when we measure it along the axis of the diagonal, suddenly that's a 70 centimeter object. The, まあちょっとぐらいはみ出してもまあいいじゃないっていうふうにも言われることあるんですけど、so poor Kawaguchi-san, as people say, come on, it's just outside a little. <laughs> ただあのこれはあるのかもご存知だと思うんですけども、あの GBWC の決勝の時っていうのは。あのみんな同じケースに入れるんですが、それ五50、50、50を前提にしたサイズのケースなんですよ。だからはみ出すと入らなくなっちゃうんだね。Okay. So, but it's not that they want to be super strict about those rules. It's actually a logistical challenge. Those boxes that Aaron just showed us that the models got into in Japan happen to be 50 by 50 by 50. They simply can't fit if they're bigger than that. であのまあ、オーストラリアの、えー、と代表戦はもう今回決まって、まあ、本当に年末までまだ時間があるんでね、うんまあ、メンテナンスなんかやってもらうのは、まあ、もちろんいいんですよ、作品をね。So, Australia is quite lucky that we're early in the season, so because we've got five and a half months, it is actually fine to keep working, have some maintenance on your model. あの前やったのがね、えーと代表が決まって、でその後最初のファイナルに来るまでの間にベース台座ね、うん、まあ本当にもう飾りではなくて単純に台座がついてきたんですよ。うん、でそうすると台座が1センチオーバーしてて、<笑>でじゃあ台座これを外せるのかって最後。うんで外せるっていうんでまあそれはもう台座なしにしても元のね元の、うん、元のえっ、ー、と審査した時の状態で飾ってもらったっていうこともあったりしました。But one of the challenges with that is that there, there was a time when the、uh, the winner had quite some time to prepare for Japan and suddenly a base appeared under the model that wasn't in it during the judging time and of course once that appeared in Japan it simply wouldn't fit、uh, so The poor owner had to. He had a choice: either to be disqualified or remove the base. なのでね、あのそういったえっ、ー、とレギュレーションはまあ最低限守っていただいて、で、あとはいろいろな発想で作っていただくんですが、よく聞かれるのがデュラマと単品。どっちが有利なんですかっていうのはよく聞かれるんです。Is James here? <laughs> Where's James? Okay, so another big question that Kawaguchi san is asked is now, of course, we've got to follow these rules and regulations. Once all of that's clear, Kawaguchi san is constantly asked, so which is better, diorama or one big model, the standing model? で、えっ、ー、とその時にだいたい答えるのはどっち？<laughs> どっちもリスクがあるんです。ですよね。でまあ、じゃあデュアラマの方からいくと要は自分の、えー、作りたい作品のコンセプトであるとか、えー、表現っていうのは伝わりやすいわけですが
for the fifth letter, it's good. So, there's actually, neither one is more advantaged or disadvantages. In fact, kawaguchi san believes that both have advantages and disadvantages. For example, on the diorama side, the, um, does it tell the concept, the story, well? That's a very big risk and challenge with the diorama. And is it easy to be read by somebody who's maybe not experienced at judging? Can somebody come up, look at it in a few seconds and go, ah, I, I know what that is. Another very big disadvantage of the diorama is that if it's imbalanced, if the suits, for example, are made at a much higher quality than the, the, the groundwork, that's actually a negative, or the opposite could also be true. Another big challenge is sometimes people put everything into the base, the diorama setting, but then the stuff that's on top of it are just okay. And the challenge is, for Karaguchi san that that creates a big imbalance in the finish. It needs to be coherent. And the other big challenge, of course, is I wish James was here. Building a diorama and having everything at the same quality, of course, is a massive time investment. じゃあ単品 is very much echoing exactly what Aaron has just said that was the diorama made because it was something the person really wanted to? And does it propel the story? Is it all part of that cohesive narrative? So then does that mean that the one standing model is it actually in a disadvantage is it weaker well even just with one standing mecca we can tell a wonderful story a narrative about it we can say what situation it's in we can say uh what it's doing and uh, even who is piloting it if we can ask which one is better no it does not What's probably more important is which one you choose to tell the vehicle, to be the vehicle of your story, your concept.